Okay, so welcome to my presentation on personal data. And uh, what I'll be focusing on is the question, what is it worth? Um, how much uh, money is generated with it? Uh, do you get anything out of it? Should you get anything out of it? Um, and those are the questions I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you. Um, so over the recent years and recently also with the Facebook scandal and Cambridge Analytica, there's this question, okay, there's this use of data and data you generate throughout the day um, that is generated, um, but there's no real question who actually owns your digital twin um, and people are making money out of it. So what's the cost of that and uh, should you get anything out of it? So to start with, I'm going to quickly go through, there's a lot of information on this, but it's just a, a picture actually on what type of data there is. So there is so-called um, static data, which is basically transactions you do, messages you send, um, or demographic data, which is your age, your legal status, whether you have children, um, yeah, your age, for example. Yeah. So, and then there is the so-called more dynamic data, um, which consists, for example, data that describe your lifestyle, your political views, um, whether where you go on vacation, what type of music you like, and all this is focused on this psychographic data, this behavioral data, or attitudinal data, so what posts you like on Facebook, what images you like on Instagram. So, and all of this is, is, is collected, and out of these dynamic data, there is where you can make money out of it because you can predict certain patterns and you can look for patterns within the society and target specific groups of people. Um, so, who is involved in all of this? So, at the center, there's, there's you. Um, and uh, the most prominent or the most obvious interaction is with, it, with uh, social networks. So, um, if you, even if you just open the app and you just scroll through, um, you, actually, like, you actually create data without even liking anything or like, opening a link. Uh, you're just there and they know what you see based on the content they provide you and um, they collect all this data. So then you have so-called data brokers, um, one of them being Cambridge Analytica, for example, um, or you have a big one, which is Axiom, which I will come back to it in a second, Oracle, um, those are the major data brokers. And they collect all this data or they buy it, and then um, they try to make predictions and to find patterns, and these patterns, they sell it then to fourth-party companies, whatever they may be, who would, like automobile industries or people that actually want to target certain people with their marketing. Um, and then in all of this, and there's still not a very prominent role, is the government. Um, like the, in the US, there was the hearings of, uh, of Zuckerberg, for example. Um, but there's no real law yet, and it is coming, and um, I will come back to this as well. Um, so these social networks, um, I mean, that is something from 2012. Within 10 seconds, um, so basically the 10 seconds we look at this, there's around, for Facebook alone, 60 gigabyte of data that is generated. Um, over 60 gigabytes of data within 10 seconds. Um, or on Amazon, like more than $23,000 spent in 10 seconds. So all this data that, uh, that is generated, they collected, and I didn't know until I did some research that you can actually access all this data. So there's with their, in, in your account settings on Facebook, um, you can download a folder with all the information uh, on your profile. And then you can, you can go through and like, see all the things you liked back until the moment uh, you opened your account on Facebook. Um, all the pictures you posted, all the groups you're in, all the messages you sent up until the day you started Facebook. Um, the same exists for Google. So there's a tool called Google Hangout uh, where you can download all the history of your Google interactions, looking at your YouTube searches um, like until 2014. Um, so 
these are basically what I would still call some static data. So out of this, there's no real value yet until these data brokers come in and they don't even make a secret out of it. Their idea is to activate this data, to find these patterns and to be the best marketers there. Um, that is one type of uh, market they have. And then they also have so-called what they call risk mitigation, um, where they do background checks. Um, if you want to get a high profile job and they, like, they do some, some background checks, um, there are companies specialized for that or for example, to get a credit, um, quicker, more conveniently. Um, that is one market branch. And then finally is um, what they call people search. So there are companies that is, for example, in the US, it's called PQ. You can type in a name of anyone that lives there if you know the location, and then you can basically, they create like a folder and a presentation of all the data they can find, criminal records, date of birth, yeah, but I will show you some more outlets on this. So what is the value of this? So in 2012, these, like the nine major data brokers, and they had a revenue of around $420 million. Um, also split up by these uh, market branches with marketing being the one, like these targeted ads and targeted marketing being the biggest play on it. So... Also, these social networks, they make money with ad revenues. So in 2017, Facebook made around $40 million with ad revenues, which is, compared to Google, very little. Google made about $69 billion in, in, in with ads. So you could ask the question, is Google actually a, um, an advertising company? Because uh, that's what they do. And then there is this one... Uh, Silicon Valley guru, which is he's called Jaron Lanier. He's uh, kind of the co the founder of virtual reality, and he wrote a couple of books on personal data and privacy. He's a very interesting guy. Um, he describes Google as a behavioral options manager. So basically, what if you type in something in Google, um, you have like this this appearance that you have a free choice, you can Google anything, you can find anything you want, but they basically know exactly what, uh, what they present you. And that's, we saw this in one of the lectures of uh, Professor Helbing, they had like they had this slide where um, you typed in uh, about the elections in Germany and depending on who typed that in, um, you saw different results. So they kind of manage the way or they, they manage what you see, they manage your behavior. And he also says, there's a quote of him, that Google's business model is the biggest threat to the freedom in the internet. Um, and there also goes like, that is one, is this marketing aspect, but there's also like this political aspect. And for example, last year, Obama said in an interview that you live in this bubble, and I think that's why our politics are so polarized right now. Um, so... And that is especially like these these fake news on Facebook. You like you just like I wouldn't even say it's your fault that you're you're such, you have such a polarized view because you just see what is presented to you within these social networks. And then that the, there are these these questions and these scandals of did Cambridge Analytica influence the the, the Brexit vote, the U.S. elections? Was this all up psychological manipulation? And in actually, in what way is this still the free choice of the, of the population, and is this even still a democratically 100% valid choice? Um, so with all these scandals and all these hearings, Facebook now, I think last two weeks ago at this F8 conference, they uh, said you can now erase all your data if you want to. Um, so, and then, but in the same interview, Zuckerberg said that that comes as a other as a cost. So every data you have, every data Facebook has on you, um, the platform has a certain pattern it learned about you. So the advantages you gain out of this this ton of data that is, that is collected about you, you lose it. So you would have to relog in any, every time, and this is a trade of every every person for himself has to do. Do I want to give up this advantage for the sake of being anonymous? Um, but one thing that, that is good with all these scandals and all this that's coming up, that it's actually within the, pers like within the discussion of, of 
like everyday life and that came so far that Cambridge Analytica shut down last week. Um, so yeah, so that is a good step. Um, another threat is and that is PQ. So if you, like I don't live in the US so that didn't really work, but um, then I put in the name of uh, a relative living there and within one second I just knew where he lived, where he lives now, which is true because I know that and the locations he lived before, his age, um, all members of his family. Um, and then if you go further, and it would have just been, I think there was even a promotion for like $1, I could access his criminal records, his date of birth, like any, any information that is actually on the internet. So, and I think that is a quite frightening part, and even though that is still the US, uh, and I didn't find anything like that here, um, I think that is that is quite dangerous because it can create this uh, suspicious society where people, I mean, these are reviews on the website that uh, people start looking up their neighbors and becoming really suspicious on who they are. And um, so this trust-based trust, um, society actually gets lost. So, and then the big question is how can you regain control of this power uh, all that data has and all the money that is generated with it. So one point is this is regulation. That is where the government steps in, and uh, especially in the EU, which are, who is a lot um, more forward-thinking than the US at this point, they have this general data protection regulation, um, which actually was, uh, which started in 2016, but after now two years of transition period, at the end of this month, it would actually be enforced. So if you want to, if you are registered on any platform and you want them to erase your data, they have to erase your data within 24 or 48 hours. So that goes within the, to the direction that um, you give back control to the, to the user uh, over their own data. In the US, they have a, a bill that was um, actually submitted beginning of the month, but they already had uh, talks going on about this since 2015, but it was never enacted. And now it became this publicly very open opinion and open discussion um, where you have actually more power about it. And the second point is, and that is uh, the one I'm going to spend more time talking about, is control through ownership. So if you own something and if you choose who you sell your data to, um, even though still other people might gain money from this, but you still get something for it. So it's not for free. And for that, I want to open up with a question. So if you could quickly open your browser and go to this link, or if you have a QR code, um, that'd be cool. It just takes a second. OK, so what I want to ask you is, if you would collect 24 hours, the entire, like all the data on your, your location, your mouse clicks, your websites, your visited, a picture of you, your vital signs, any, any track you leave, um, how much would you sell it for? Like I gave, I gave you four options. Um, five, actually, if you do not want to sell. Okay, so still most of you would not sell their data. Um, but then the question is, actually, people make money out of that. And then there is uh, this Italian guy, for example. He's called Federico Zanier. So far, 1.5 gigabytes of text, which is equivalent to 1,500 books, and I've taken 30,000 photos. Meanwhile, corporations have been using my data for their own profit. They use and they sell my data. Often, we don't understand that by signing the thermal services, we give away the rights to all our own data. In 2012, in the US, the ad revenues was $30 billion. In 2013, the estimates are for $40 billion. In 2012, I personally made $0. So, is my personal data worthless to me? I'm sending my data for $2. For $2, you get an entire day worth of data bundled in a single folder, which includes the website I visit, 
an image of my face looking at the computer taken every 30 seconds, a screenshot of the page that I was looking at, my GPS location, the position of my mouse, and a lot of the application that I was using. Your contribution will give you access to my data and will allow me to finish a browser extension and an iPhone app that allows you to do the same. If more people do the same, one day, marketer might pay us for our own data. If you are interested in selling your own data and turn them into a profit, please support this campaign. Thank you for your support. So, we basically in the end made, I think, $2.7,000 on Kickstarter just by selling his own data for two, five dollars. I think for five dollars you could get a week of data. Um, so, and he actually, even though people still might use this data without his consent, um, he actually made money with this. And he's not the only one, so there's this Dutch student in 2014, he actually auctioned all his personal data for 280 pound, which is a lot less than the other guy did. But then there are also these new markets emerging, and there's this company, for example, in the U.S., it's called DataKoo. Um, they basically provide you a platform where you can put your data and put it up for sale. Um, and with this, and there's this new like, social economic concept that is emerging, and Jaren Lanier describes this in his book, Who Owns the Future? If anybody would sell his own data for, even if it's five... $10 a day, you would not only kind of regain back a form of control of it, but then the question is, can you make a new society where um, you can generate a form of basic income in a society that is automated just by providing data, just by selling it to companies that target you specifically for the, for the marketing? And then he even suggests this idea, can you elevate the population above a poverty line um, just by them being on Instagram, for example. So that's the open question I want to leave it at, and thank you for your attention.